lift off Houston we have lift off um, welcome welcome to the monologue welcome to the conversation welcome to the thought process welcome to wherever we are how do we get here how do we get this far we got this far by fighting adversity, by standing on the shoulders of giants. We got this far by perseverance. We got this far by overcoming the resistance, overcoming the pestilence of history. Mm. That's a deep thought. Right. Welcome to the crazy times. Wherever you are, welcome to the crazy times. Churches are closed. The bars are closed. The businesses are closed. It's insane. Meanwhile, somewhere out there, here's the key point. Let's just dive in already. Somewhere out there, 300,000 people a day are dying as a direct result of the lockdown of industry, the, shut, the government shutdown of industry, and the fact that we're, we're under siege. We're under siege. That's what's happening. Government has directly and indirectly seized the businesses. Um, crazy, huh? Crazy. A great time for free money, right? I noticed quite a number of government grants being given out. Oh, you can't work, but don't worry, we'll give you money. Comes from nowhere, right? It's amazing how many people don't care where things come from, as long as they get theirs. <laughs> people don't think anymore. They don't think how the products got to the shelves. They don't think where the people came from, right? The people are getting into relationships with people they shouldn't be getting into relationships with. <laughs> Because they're not doing their due diligence. They're not doing their background check. You know, it's amazing how, how many of the principles and rules of business are actually good for life. Really, they, they are. Um, we'll just need to do a background check. You know, if you did that on your personal relationships, it would be interesting. People would be much more careful if that happened as well. Excuse me while I drink my coffee from my Marvel Comics mug. And it's so hot, it's uh, steaming up my glasses here. Right. How are you doing? Are you okay? It's rough out there, right? I was talking to... Uh, a responsible member of the local community recently. They were telling me how people call them and start crying because their whole life is being destroyed right before their eyes. Their whole life is being destroyed right before their very eyes. It's wild, huh? Isn't this wild? <laughs> but don't worry, you can stand outside your front door and clap like a fucking seal and it'll all be okay. Ring your bells and it'll all be fine. <laughs> Raise money for the right people. Everybody will love you. Enough. Enough already. Let's just get to it, shall we? 
let's just get to it. Uh, meanwhile, I've I've realised that my uh, my background audio recording is also recording video as well. So um, I'm going to shut that down because that will cause my computer to have a complete heart attack. Um, what does that mean? It means it's all or nothing. Welcome to the real world. Think about this, right? Um, by the way, I'm G. Welcome to the Academy. And um, you can find more information about me, obviously, online. Um, do your research, right? Do your research. So think about this. Um, we're going to browse through the articles that I've posted on Facebook while we still have one because um, the men in funky hats have been at it again. They've been deleting whole profiles, but we'll get into that another day. It's coming. It's coming. Information is being disappeared. And the argument is better the information than the people. <laughs> better the information than the people. Could have stopped these little uh, Facebook posts from popping up here. Getting annoying. Anyway, think about this. Some 100 million city dwellers around the world are likely to fall into poverty because of the coronavirus lockdown, the World Bank has warned. A hundred million people living. See, that's why it was always better to live in the country. Now, I could give you a hundred reasons for living in the city. None of them matter right now. Because <laughs> everything is shut. Can't go to the swimming pool. Can't sit on a park bench. Um, can't even visit. Imagine government telling people they can't visit their friends. Yes, but it's all to... Really? You got to ask yourself some serious questions. There's some um, there's some serious mass Stockholm syndrome going on right now, right across right across the world, right across the world. It's wild. Almost half of the entire global workforce could lose their livelihoods because of the coronavirus pandemic. A UN agency has revealed. Half of the workers in the world. But don't worry, stay at home. Don't worry, stay at home. Break the supply chain. Break it. Go on. Go on. Snap it. Snap it in half. Stomp it under your boot. Right? It's incredible. Half of the entire global workforce. No work. No food. No food. Well, yeah. <laughs> now then you've got your panic demic, haven't you? You've got that then. Thousands of people lined up for nearly two and a half miles for emergency food parcels in the southern African city of Centurion. <laughs> it's really a city called Centurion. Wow. Amid lockdown. Two and a half miles. Meanwhile, your fridge, if you live in the West, your fridge is stocked, right? It's pretty comfortable lockdown, right? It's pretty comfortable for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, just enough, isn't it? Just enough comfort that you won't protest. Just enough comfort that you won't go out. Just enough comfort that you won't fight back. Just enough. Crazy. You, and you can't see it, right? You don't see it. You won't see it. But don't worry. Don't worry. It'll catch up with you eventually. The International Labour Organization reported reports <laughs> great, great, reported reports that some 1.6 billion workers in the informal economy are in immediate danger of losing their livelihoods. 
1.6 billion workers. 1.6 billion. But but don't worry. Stay safe. Protect the NHS. Right. Watch them elevated to being gods. Can't criticize them. Can't crit if, if if you criticize them. Oh my God, you're so evil for crit. Um. You know it. <laughs> You criticize them, and someone criticizes you, but their criticism of you is okay because, you know, it, it's the party line, right? Party! It's a party line, because they're all just having a party. Um, immediate danger. Immediate, hello? Days matter. Days matter. Seconds matter. Time matters. Deaths from the lockdown will far exceed deaths from coronavirus. It's already happened. 300,000 people a day. Don't worry, though. It's not democide. Don't worry. It's not democide. Not at all. History is not repeating itself. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be fine, right? They've got something planned for you. Um, virtually everything mandated by governments to combat this virus is extremely detrimental to life. Think about this. Virtually everything. You don't see any advertisement of taking vitamins. You don't see any advertisement of taking minerals. You don't see any advertisement of getting lots of sun. You don't see any advertisement of, you know, getting that little bit extra whatever it is that your body needs, right? Your, your zinc, your, your iron, your magnesium, your fish oils, your iodine. You don't, you don't, they don't talk about anything like this. They don't really care. I mean, TV could be just ways to help, ways to grow, ways to progress, ways to communicate, ways through. But it's not. It's fear and panic and fear and panic and fear and panic. Do, 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 do. Anyway, don't worry. The same people who got you into it will get you out of it, if you believe them, right? <laughs> Virtually everything mandated, yep. Virtually everything mandated is extremely detrimental to life. Could it be by design? What do you think? Oh no, it's just by accident. They're doing the best they can with the knowledge they have, even though they have the knowledge of everything. and. Their result is nothing. Um, come on, come on, have you got it yet? The more stress, the more stress a person is under, the weaker the immune system is. People will get sick at this time simply because of the undue stress. Simply, now I'm, I'm just picking out these, these are points that I'm picking out that you can't argue with. I've proved them in the previous presentations. I'll prove them again if someone challenges me. People are going to stress. It's stress. It's a lack of ease. It's disease. The RT-PCR test for COVID does not appear to be very reliable. Because it's not. Because it's not meant to be. You know, they, they, nothing, nothing by chance, nothing by accident. You want more? I'll give you more. The man who won the Nobel Prize for designing uh, HIV. No, not HIV. Designing um, the, the test for... <laughs> HIV was designed, actually, but we'll get into that another day. Um, the man who won the Nobel Prize for designing a test for the recognition of HIV, which, which is interesting because HIV was a uh, human immunodeficiency virus. Immunodeficiency. 
an immune deficiency syndrome. Your immunity has been weakened, has been destroyed by years of bad habits, by uh, living in dirty, bad environments with unclean air, by eating the wrong kinds of food, by putting the wrong kinds of information into your brain. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, how much of the supermarket is just boxes of cereals, aisles of sweets and chocolate and alcohol. Crazy, huh? Have you ever looked at shopping trolleys? Have you ever looked at what people are buying there? What they can't live without? Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Um, you know, the, so the, the man who designed the test for HIV said he, he couldn't identify um, COVID as an actual actual sp specific kind of virus, although he did say that um, he did believe that it was man-made. So there you go. Go go down the rabbit hole yourself. See what you can find. Emerging studies indicate a much higher infection rate and thus much lower mortality rate for COVID. That's interesting. Everyone has been infected. In the UK, a positive test is not even required for someone to be deemed to have died from C-19. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I can... I'll provide you with more links. I just thought I'd pick out these things. Um, it's crazy. It is, it's, this has been said by government ministers. You know, you sit and you, you watch the clips. and you're, do, do you know what I saw the other day? There was um, a an Australian politician who was talking about how wonderful vaccines were and that she, she, she went on live. TV and, and took the vaccine on TV and said, "Oh, look, I, you know, I feel great, and I didn't, I didn't, you know, it didn't hurt at all, and, and whatever." And when somebody uh, magnified the, the the film of the vaccine shot, they discovered they hadn't taken the cap off the end of the vaccine, so it was all fake, right? It's all fake. It's all fake. That's why. That's why they've been advertising for crisis actors for years to set up. That's why in America, the, the Obama administration legalized propaganda to be printed and published by American intelligence agencies within America. Yeah, the, <laughs> the media was bad before that. I mean, go and check it. Go and check it. Go and check it. It was legalized. The, 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 um, yeah, and so when it's legalized, right, you, you do what you want and you can't be prosecuted for it because it's legal, right? <laughs> Wild. Wild. Um, if the system for recording hospital C-19 deaths is questionable, the one suggested by the CQC for care homes is downright bizarre because at the quest of this state, the CQC have asked non-medically trained care home providers to report what they suspect are C-19 cases. And then they add these suspicions to the death certificates and it's counted as C-19 and people get the money in their back pocket because it's all about the money, right? Feel free to challenge me on any of these points. It's just something to think about. Something to think about. Oh, and you can go to Reuters.com and see the aerial footage which shows mile long queues for food in South Africa. But don't worry, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. It's all going to be grand. Yeah, don't worry. The vaccines will help you to forget. They'll go into your brain and they eat parts of your brain. So there's no, no need to try and remember because they'll just make you forget anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So you don't have to remember. You see how we've solved all your problems for you? Yeah. Remember Monsanto's herbicidal warfare? Do you remember? Doesn't really matter anymore. Because it's all about your health, right? It's all about keeping you healthy. That's why the British police are patrolling the streets. According to um, Mail Online, UK's homepage. Um, and whilst on the street, um, there's a story that... Um, 
where is this? It doesn't say exactly. Somewhere in England, the police closed down a family string quartet from playing classical music for their neighbours, claiming that they were breaking coronavirus lockdown rules. Right? <laughs> yeah, removed the, the breaking lockdown rules. I mean, it's... You see, but it's all about your health, right? Um, where did this happen? Uh, Raphael Toads 53 had been playing with his family outside their property in West London. Um, police officers said it was dangerous because it encouraged residents to gather on this street. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, the ironies of it. The musical family had been playing Shostak. Kovic's string quartet number four, which was written when Shostakovich was scared that he would be arrested by Stalin. <laughs> they, uh, can you believe this is going on? Can you believe this is going on? Anyway, here's the proof of what I said earlier um, from the New York Times. Uh, toilet paper of record. Um, Lockdown kills 300,000 people every day, but stay at home and pretend that everything is okay and it'll be fine. Um, so, Beasley, uh, Beasley is head of one of the world food programs. Uh, Beasley warned the UN Security Council last week that as the world deals with the COVID-19 pandemic, it is it's 19, like they're going to have 20 and 21 and 22 and 23 and Letters and numbers, letters and numbers. Um, uh, I've lost my place. Pandemic. <clears throat> um, as the world deals with it, the world is on the brink of a hunger pandemic that could lead to multiple famines of biblical proportions. Multiple famines of biblical proportions. He should know. Within a few months, if immediate action isn't taken, um, it's immediate action that got us into this in the first place, right? He said 821 million people go to bed every night hungry all over the world right now. A further 135 million are facing crisis levels of hunger or worse. And a new World Food Programme analysis shows that as a result of COVID-19, an additional 130 million people could be pushed to the brink of starvation by the end of 2020. WFP is uh, providing, the World Food Programme is providing food to nearly 100 million people on any given day. So we still can't f feed the world, make it a better place. We're still feeding 100 million people a day, um, including about 30 million people who literally depend on us to stay alive. If you live in Britain, check out where your local food banks are, right? Um, You've got there's people in Britain who can't feed themselves. It's shocking. Beasley said, and if those 30 million people can't be reached, our analysis shows that 300,000 people could starve to death every single day over a three-month period. And that doesn't include increased starvation due to the new coronavirus, does it? Eh? Eh? Have you got what's happening yet? Have you figured it out? Have you figured it out? Have you figured out that if we don't do something... Nothing good, nothing good is going to happen. Um, here's a quote from the man, Steve Ann Donovan. A reminder of the struggle. The more passive we are, the worse the result will be. The more active we are, the more we can attain our freedom. That our fate rests in our hands. And that the social controllers on platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Google, Skype, and others know exactly what we're thinking and doing. And that our actions on these platforms dictate their actions. It's very true. But we also need to make sure that we act and don't just react. Because if we're only reacting to what they're doing, then we're one step behind everything that's gone on. That is going on. That is going to go on. Now, I could make this whole presentation about this one post. I could make it about this one post. Now, I'm not going to because um, I don't want to just click, just hammer one point. Maybe I should. Maybe I should just hammer one point. Maybe maybe you don't believe that that one point really matters. Um, 
I've got hundreds of, there's hundreds of quotes here. Uh, this information is from a book. Oh, I can't remember, can't remember the name of the book. Darn it. I should always put the link at the top and not the bottom. Um, hmm. If you want more information, contact me. I'll give it to you. Um, anyway, these are quotes from a study of the history of vaccinations. And um, I guarantee you, if you start reading it, you won't get to the end because you'll, you'll stop reading halfway through because you'll have had enough. Um, here's a quote. Here's the first quote. Dr. Archie Kelo Kerinos, MD, PhD, AM, MBBS, FA, PM, pediatrician for over 30 years. Um, his quote is, the further I looked into it, meaning the history of vaccination, the more shocked I became. I find the whole vaccine business was indeed a gigantic hoax. Most doctors are convinced that they are useful, but if you look at the proper statistics and study the instance of these diseases, you will realize it is not so. And there's another like 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 quotes from major doctors there. Um, but don't worry. I mean, don't worry. It, it's fine. There, you're, you're not surrounded by people with autism. Don't worry. It, you're fine, it, it, <laughs> right? There, there hasn't just been a huge drop in IQ over the last 20 years. Don't worry about it, you're fine, right? How would you even know? How would you even know? Yeah. While we, meanwhile, while we fight and struggle and strive and try to take steps forward, there are great people out there leading the way, making a difference. Um, check out Facebook, uh, Biba Tanya. Uh, my quote is, some women have more balls than men. It is so true. Science proves, this is, um, I, just, I just screenshotted her quote from earlier because it's just so pertinent, it's so relevant. She writes, science proves that Alcohol damages the immune system, stress damages the immune system, vaccines damage the immune system, antibacterial gel is a hormone disruptor, dairy is mucus forming in the human body. There's a lot of bad elements within our society that help to reduce the quality of our immune system, making us more susceptible to a certain um, immune diseases, cancer just being one of those, it's just the body's immune system breaking down. And yet under government guidelines, um, please note, off licenses are open, you're isolated, you aren't allowed to hug your friends, the vaccine clinics are still up and running, so are the abortion clinics, uh, covering yourself in antibacterial gel before you're allowed to enter into a supermarket, you're wearing gloves that actually transmit bacteria, you're wearing a mask so you can't breathe properly, and the NHS is encouraging you to drink milk at the first sign of a cough. That, that is the official NHS guidelines. So do you honestly think that this country is operating under any form of science-based health advice at all. Meanwhile, people are still applauding and wearing masks and self-isolating. Tra la 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 la. Yeah. Um, you know, keep it up, guys. If you can't look around yourself and realize that there's something not quite right right now. <laughs> Straight in with the empty streets. It's a scene from every single zombie movie that has ever existed. You're living in it, and you don't even realize you're living in a movie. Huh. So, um, npr.org reported that child sex abuse reports are on the rise amid lockdown orders. A lot of doctors are pointing this out as well. Um, quite frightening. <clears throat> but stay at home anyway, right? Um, there has been a rise in the number of minors contacting the National Sexual Assault Hotline to Report Abuse. That's according to R-A-I-N-N, -N, the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network. Ugh, what a... Isn't that, isn't that crazy that that even has to exist? 
what kind of world are we living in? Um, anyway, this network runs the hotline. By the end, <laughs> it's a hotline. By the end of March, with much of the country under lockdown, there was a 22% increase in monthly calls from you people younger than 18, and half of all incoming contacts were from minors. That's a first in Reigns history. Camilla Cooper, the organization's vice president of public policy, tells NPR. Of those young people who contacted the hotline in March, 67% identified the perpetrator as a family member. 79% said they were currently living with the perpetrator. One out of every five cases where the minor was living with their in one out of every five cases where the minor was living with their abuser, Rain assisted the minor in immediately contacting police. As a result of looking at the information that we had from those sessions, it was clear that the abuse was escalating in both frequency and severity. Cooper says, So a lot of kids that were coming to the hotline were feeling pretty vulnerable and traumatized, and it was a direct result of COVID-19. It's not a direct result of COVID-19. It's a direct result of the lockdown. Get it right. Because they were quarantined with their abuser, and the abuser is now abusing them on a daily basis. Um, scary, scary, scary. Um... Yeah, if you're following the the posts that I'm scrolling through, you'll know that um, Mr. I.C.K.E. was wiped down the memory hole of F.B. Uh, of course, it's completely wrong. But there we go. Right, but that's it, right? And it, did you, you know, people don't know history, right? They don't know history at all. They don't understand what's going on. They don't understand what we're having to live through, what's happening. They, they're not aware of the, the true meanings of the symbolic um, symbolic reality. No, it's not a reality. It's uh, occult presence is what it is because if you actually understand symbolism there's a picture of a woman wearing a mask with a rainbow over her head and the nhs written above it if you actually understood what that really meant what that symbology really was you would be passing bricks right there you would because this is it the nhs is being elevated into a position of administration for the contact tracing task force that is going to be introduced if we don't push back. These are people who are going to be allowed into your home to check that you're not hiding anyone, right? We're not, we're not back to Anne Frank, are we? We're not going back to that time, are we? Please tell me we're not. Um, you want my quote on it? Well, I read the article, I was pretty uh, miffed after reading the article, and um, it just led me to write that this is it, because it is. They're coming for everybody. They want everybody. They want everybody's non-essential ass locked down forever. And it will happen unless people push back. So if you're going to panic in this present situation, and a lot of people are panicking, if you're going to panic, panic about the right thing. Yeah, make sure you're panicking about the right thing. Don't panic about the wrong thing. Okay. Um, panic exists for a reason, right? So panic about the right thing. Um, the right thing would be freedoms and your rights and the fact that uh, big government is not here to save you. Sorry. A new analysis by Edge Health, a leading provider of data to NHS trusts, warns that a second and third wave of non-corona deaths are about to hit Britain. What? Non-corona deaths? Where do they even get this information? from? What statistics are they using? What kind of deaths are they talking about? Why are they even publishing this stuff? 
unless unless radical solutions can be found to resume because as if lockdown wasn't a radical failure um unless radical solutions can be found to resume normal service and slash waiting lists could the waiting list exist because of the lockdown oh god somebody help us the nhs may be forced to institute a formal regime of rationing it's already rationing the second wave is already breaking is it oh, look at the language it is made it, it endless waves right um it's made up of non-coronavirus patients not able or willing to access health care because of the crisis. Ah, blame the patients. Blame the victim. There we go. That's it. Based on ONS and NHS data, Health Edge estimated, estimates these deaths now total approximately 10,000 and are running at around 2,000 a week. They include a wide range of typical emergency admissions, including stroke and heart attack patients, as well as those with long-term chronic conditions such as diabetes, not to mention all the other elements of healthcare that are closed down, people not being screened for cancer, etc., etc. Uh, all these people are not able to access primary or secondary healthcare services. They've just shut everything off, guys. They've shut everything off. It's not coming back. Definitely not the way it was. It's not coming back. They don't care. Many people are sadly dying in their homes. You're not going to see it, are you? Others are just getting to hospital too. Oh, just getting to hospital too. Oh, sorry, we're just a little bit too late there. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, well, why didn't you phone us s sooner? Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry nobody answered the phone. You know, we had to furlough so many staff because, uh, you know, the hospital's half empty because uh, people are not coming to the hospital because they've been told not to go to the hospital, haven't they? Question, how do you fight back? How do you fight back? You fight back by realizing that family is the core of everything. That family is key. Along with God, gold, guts and guns, <laughs> right? Oh no, but we can't fight back because we don't have any weapons. Yes, you've been disarmed, haven't you? Now you're harmless, right? Now you're harmless. Who are you going to call? Huh? Who are you going to call? Right. Who are you going to call? Eh? <laughs> no one's coming to help you. <sighs> so what do you do? You communicate with people. Because connection changes everything. You reach out to people. You reach out to people you haven't spoken to in a while, you put out messages, you share, you ask people if they're okay. Just ask. I mean, even if you can't help someone, just ask. Maybe the person knowing that they can contact you when they need to is enough. And you'd be true to yourself, you'd be real with your words because the words in your head have to travel through your heart before they will connect with anyone at all. So you use the right words you use the right words use the right words yeah and let honesty and truth be your guide at least have a moral compass people without a moral compass you're screwed um and you've, you've got to be able to admit your mistakes as well and there's something i pointed out that the average adult has a massive problem with the admission of error most adults are just not able to admit that they made a mistake or they have a problem or they need to improve or even that they need help with things. Um, a lot of people talk about this in business as well. There's a lot of people go to these conferences and go to these big events and one of the things that they forget to do is ask other people for help when they're at the event. Um, businesses exist to help businesses, right? Otherwise, there's not much point. There's not much point in anything, yeah? We've got to be there for each other and now now is the time now is the time to be there for each other now is the time to listen now is the time to learn now is the time to to sharpen all of those skills that we need uh, to realize that there's things that we don't know that we need to know there's things that we don't know that we need to know do you know about the Ministry of Information? Do you know about the original role of the BBC? Um, 
do, do you know how it was set up and who set it up and why they, they, they set it up and how quickly it was set up? Are you aware of how quickly it, between the discovery of television, between Baird's first shoebox experiments um, and the actual ability of the BBC to broadcast, it was, it was something like six years. It was less than six years. Less than six years from not existing to being able to broadcast a, a program. I mean, this, this, this technology, this, I mean, that, that feat at a time when communication was complex, right? It, it's not as, not like today where the information was instantly accessible at a time when communication was complex. That's an amazing achievement, an amazing achievement. Anyway, did you know there was a Ministry of Information? It was formed on the 4th of September, 1939. Actually, the ministries, there were other previous ministries of information existed way, 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 way before that. You go back to the First World War, there were definitely ministries there. The Ministry of, and I, I'm pretty sure that the Wikipedia has altered a bit since I, I checked it before. I'm pretty sure that that page has been rewritten because I seem to remember there being a hell of a lot more information. I mean, where do you think Orwell got his ideas for his book from? Where, where do you think those ideas didn't come from? Nowhere. It was a plan. The Ministry of Information, MOI, was formed on the 4th of September uh, 1939, um, the day after Britain's declaration of war and the First Minister was sworn into office on the 5th of September 1939. The Ministry's function was to promote the national case to the public at home and abroad in time of war by issuing national propaganda. It was pro-pagan. And controlling news and information. That's because the word propaganda actually has a religious context and was first used by um, it was first used by the Pope, I believe, several hundred years ago. You go back into the, the etymology of the words, you'll, you'll find out where it uh, came from. Uh, anyway, it was the office was initially responsible for censorship, issuing official new official news home publicity and overseas publicity in allied and neutral countries. Uh, these functions were matched by responsibility for monitoring public opinion uh -huh, uh -huh, through a network of regional information, regional information offices. Huh? Huh? Mm, interesting. Responsibility for publicity in enemy territories was organized by Department E.H. Eh. <laughs> Department E, eh. later part of the Special Operations Executive. And of course, that's just one little part of a, oh, <laughs> of a big story. Hi, Jazz. What are you, oh, it's in your room somewhere, Jazz. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's in your room in one of the boxes. It's not in your room? No. It, it's, no. No, no, it's not, not in the toy boxes, but in the little boxes that are under the desk in your room. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in one of those. Or ask mum. Ask mum. She might know where it is. Okay. Okay, well, sorry. Can't help you with that. <coughs> My apologies. Uh, Jazz has lost her little green pump. Um, there you go. Uh, that's, that's life. Um, I also posted on Facebook. <laughs> that um, yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna cough now. My th my voice is still screwed. Mm. I need uh, something. <laughs> mm. Try this. Um, Argent collodial. Um, got some uh, collodial silver here. Let me just. Uh, mm. Good for uh, good for everything basically. Um, and they won't tell you about that, will you? Media won't tell you about collodial silver. Won't tell you about that. Nice little bottle delivered to your door. They won't tell you about the health benefits of coconut oil. They'll tell you to cook with it, but they won't tell you about everything else that it can do. Huh? Crazy. Um, 
Operation Mockingbird, you're talking about information and ministries. Um, I posted a YouTube video about uh, how regional media just pumps out the same message. They get scripts. It's a script. I mean, the news is a script. You understand? It's a story. It's a script that's read. They're actors. The newsreaders are actors. Haven't you worked it out yet? It's not even really real. It's not. It's, it's, it's not real crazy huh um, and yet people sit down and they watch it because they've been trained <laughs> they've, been, they've been trained <laughs> right um, sorry about that so <laughs> I think jazz was trying to get into the room um, anyway welcome to uh, welcome to our world welcome to our propaganda filled fake news insanity basically insanity is our reality welcome to our dystopia welcome to our nightmare. like I did this interview with uh, somebody a few weeks ago and they were like why has nobody made a film about the perfect place or the way society should be and my response was well that'll be that would be utopia and and utopia is not a good place to go to right um, like one man's heaven is another man's hell. Like my neighbor's idea of utopia is going to be my, it, it, it's not going to be the place where, where I want to end up. And even this idea of heaven that people have where it's, it's everything you could ever want and it's really peaceful. And it's like, well, it sounds to me like there wouldn't be much challenge there. And if there's not much challenge, then there's not much point. I mean, there's this idea of heaven. What, what, what the heck, what is that all about? Uh, um, you know, it, 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 or like those, you know, the suicide bombers that think they're gonna get seventy virgins or something like that. Um, what? Why? Wh how is that? Uh, it's wrong. It's just so wrong. It's all. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. It's all mind control. It's all mind control. It always has been the assassins of history were the assassins because they used hashish to control the minds. It used to make people think they were in heaven already. Crazy, huh? Crazy. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Very sorry. Excuse me. In a recent candid interview, Bill Gates outlined that Despite the comparatively small threat of coronavirus, he and his colleagues don't want a lot of recovered people who have acquired natural immunity. I, in a, the link is posted, right? I mean, you're probably not going to believe it unless you see him say it. And I don't have time to line up all the video clips one by one by one by one by one. But they're there. You know, the, the truth exists for people who want to find it. In a recent candid interview, Bill Gates outlined that despite the comparatively small threat of coronavirus, he and his colleagues don't want a lot of recovered people who have acquired natural immunity. <laughs> Pause. They instead are hoping to become reliant on vaccines and antiviral medication. Shockingly, Gates also suggests people be made to have a digital ID showing their COV ID showing their vaccination status. They're going to use phones. They're going to use phones. To, they're, all, they're already doing it. <coughs> they're already tracking everybody. They just are going to roll out telling you. You know, first they do it, then they tell you about it. That seems to be how it works. Um, it's all backwards. It's all backwards. Um, Gates suggests people be made to have digital ID showing their vaccination status and that people with this digital immunity proof would not be allowed to travel without. People without the proof would not be allowed to travel. Such an approach would mean very big money for vaccine producers. Yeah, but the, well, it'll be voluntary, but you won't be allowed to, into shops. You won't be allowed to get on a plane, on a train, on a 
bus because you know they'll they'll scan your phone and your phone will have your details and you won't be able to live you won't be able to move you won't be able to buy or sell you won't be able to communicate you won't be able to go out you won't be able to have relationships you won't be able to have a family it's control and always across all sectors and it's been coming for a long 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 period of time but stay at home anyway stay at home hospitals sh <laughs> this is an article what's this article from it's a british newspaper right bbc news okay there we go uh bbc news we can cope with the virus peak the hospital bosses say and this, this was published like two weeks ago but it's still really relevant i mean Hospitals should be able to cope with an expected peak in coronavirus cases, according to NHS bosses. NHS providers, which represents hospitals and other NHS trusts in England, said trust trust them, right? Said there were enough beds in hospitals for patients. Even though they tell us there's not, right? Have you seen how they're publishing opposite ideas and from one day to the next? The hard work to increase intensive care capacity and free up space in general wards has paid off. There we go. This is saying that there's not a there's not a real problem. Yep, there's not a real problem. Much madness. Um, meanwhile, a lack of concern for the actual facts behind the the masters of this problem are are quite concerning. Uh, Chris Whitty, who is the the British health advisor, uh, Whitty, what a great name, um, is about to be appointed to the executive board of the World Health Organization and has received 31 million pounds in funding from Bill Gates. Lovely. The UK Vaccine Network has received in excess of 200 million in grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, hmm. Gates has funded GlaxoSmithKline and Purbright Institute as well. Gates is going to charge £225 per test, so the UK alone is worth roughly £14 billion. This is the coronavirus test. The bottom line is £14 billion from this virus. The bottom line is Gates is pulling the strings of the UK and this lockdown. Yes, not to mention the fact that he funds uh, the main medical institutes as well. The UK is going to become the vaccine test guinea pig of the world if we don't push back. And there's a scary looking man who is uh, in charge of health. You'd, you'd expect some healthy person to be put in charge of health, not someone who looks like they've slept in the back of a lorry their entire life. Um, meanwhile, it's all part of the it's all part of the plan anyway. Um, it's all part of the plan where. You know, people talk about problem, reaction, solution. This is this is this is no problem. There was no problem. Overreaction. Let's do too much of everything, and the result is no solution. There you go. That's it. That's it. Pretty much, in a in a nutshell, really. Meanwhile, on YouTube.com, you can watch the uh, one of the BBC's health advisors state and i watched this and i listened to it and i saw our lips move and i'm pretty sure it's real said that the biggest problem is that we haven't infected enough people to end the lockdown isn't that um isn't that a bizarre thing to say we haven't infected enough people to end the lockdown uh you think that's scary you think that's scary listen to this the Fund for Public Health in New York City is looking for people to work as contract, contract, isn't it contact, is it, or is it contract tracers? As experts say, the strategy is necessary for cities and states planning to relax social distancing orders, to relax them, not remove them. The position requires experience in a health-related field or some sort of public health training. The Center for Disease Disease control and prevention calls contract tracing part of a multi-pronged approach that can stab you from all sides to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. It involves public health staff working with a patient to help them recall everyone with whom they've had close contact during the time frame. Well, they already got this, got this data from phones anyway. While they may have become infectious, it's frightening. Those who have been in contact with an infected person are informed by a contract. They're going to stop people communicating with people who have different ideas from themselves. 
that that's what it's going to be used for. It it it's 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 like a form of pre-crime, basically. Um, it's just another level of of insanity. Um, yeah, and if you want to do it, you get paid fifty-seven thousand dollars with benefits. And if you've just lost your job, it's going to be a lifeline for for most people. Um, Watch COVID Future from thecrowhouse.com. You'll find it on YouTube and BitChute. Watch it before it disappears. Uh, Max has a lot of great things to say. Um, we're going to finish with this. The man, Mr. Musk, um, says that the lockdown will cause great harm, not just to Tesla, but to many companies, Musk said on a recent call. Uh, while Tesla will weather the storm, there are many companies that will not. Everything people have worked for their whole life is being destroyed in real time. Musk even went so far as to call it undemocratic for state governments to order shutdowns of businesses deemed non-essential. <clears throat> right, truth, truth. If somebody wants to stay in their house, that's great, they should be able to, to do it, he said. But to say they cannot leave their house and that they will be arrested if they do. Well, that's fascist. That's not democratic. This is not freedom. Time to give people their goddamn freedom back. The only trouble is that this is being said by the man who wants to put brain chips in everybody's head. Um, I guess, I guess even a stopped clock tells the right time twice a day. And look, we've reached me. <laughs> If you're watching the video, you'll understand that. Well, I could go on and on and on and on and on and uh, present you with a, a more depressing perspective about our, our future, but I'm not because the future's not written. It's up to you. You get to choose. Now is the time. So take a look around, think about what's important to you and make the decisions that you need to make to make things better. My name's G, I represent the Academy. Um, you can reach me on Facebook under Graham William Hendry. You can reach me on Twitter. You can reach me on Instagram. You can reach me on LinkedIn. You can also find the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching on YouTube and on several other sites across the net. Um, if you've got articles you want to send me, that would be great. I'll have a look at them. If you disagree, let me know. We can chat about it. Um, that's about it, really. Thank you very much for tuning in and paying attention. Uh, wherever you are, I wish you a fantastic day. And uh, as usual, don't forget to tell the ones you love that you love them. That's it. Um, stay cool, guys. Speak to you soon.